Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Crazy Wrestling Review. Right here, Brad Tragic, and uh, I'm sorry. This is gonna be a shitty review. Um, we're all horrible last night, so I'm gonna give you the basic overview of it. And yeah, I hope you DVR'd it. Um, if you did, just go ahead and delete it. It's a waste of your time. You don't want to, It's two hours of your life that you'll never get back. And just think, here soon you can say, hey, that was three hours of my life I can never get back. So hopefully they uh, do a little better. But it's going to be a lot of waste of your time. Um, quick highlights. AJ, Fiasco, if you've seen SmackDown, the same thing happened on Raw. Except there's a proposal from both people. AJ proposed to see them punk. Dan Bryan proposed to AJ. Crap ensued. Nobody got married. Nobody got engaged. At the end of Raw, AJ slapped both of them, walked out. That's all we know. That's how we're going into Money in the Bank. The other main event for Money in the Bank, just realized that they all were in action tonight in a crappy tag team match that made no sense whatsoever. It was crap. meant nothing. The other Money in the Bank match, the World Heavyweight title match, there was a worthless tag team match. Ended in like two minutes. Lord Tenzai squashed Tyson Kidd outside the ring as well, add to the match. Christian was in it for no reason. Dolph Ziggler was in it for no reason. It it could have been just the Lord Tenzai versus Tyson Kidd. No need for Christian Ziggler to be there. They didn't really do much. Stupid. Uh, Zack Ryder announcing what everybody already knows. He's going to be you know, hosting SmackDown this week. Rock is going to be at the Thousand Episode. Uh, advertisement something for Raw Active. Uh, something about something interactive with Raw. I don't know. I don't trust any of that stuff with WWE because I think it's all rigged. So we'll see how that goes when it comes to be. Supposedly, I think it's either on the thousandth episode or the episode after the thousandth episode that's going to start. So maybe they'll talk about what's going to happen on the thousandth episode with that. Um, who knows? Who knows? Um, Uh, Sin Cara is going to be in the World Heavyweight title Money in the Bank match because he beat Heath Slater. After that, Mr. Bob Backlund came out, this week's legend, and um, came out and put the crossface chicken wing on him. No match. It was just like a little thing. He came out and, I'll beat you up. Or, oh. um, Michael Cole versus Jerry Lawler. What the Horace Swoggle is the anonymous general manager. They ruin the storyline. All you need to know, Horace Swoggle, anonymous general manager. Do they have anything in common? Should they have been together? Hell no. It should have been somebody else. Uh, I think I, I honestly think it was supposed to be John Laurinaitis, but they figured probably it didn't fit, so they just dropped it, and we're going to just ignore it, but then they figured fans probably wanted to know who it was, so then they are trying to figure out who wasn't on TV, who, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I think there's probably, I, I think there's some fishiness, because Horace Waddle was on TV during that time, I thought, on Raw. So, I don't know. Maybe someone will find a loophole and show Horace Waddle and the anonymous general manager in the same segment. <laughs> or very close to a segment. Um, yeah. So, that's about it. Not much more. Talk about uh, pre-show tag title match. Camacho and El Nacho, whatever the hell their names are, they're not going to win tag belts, so I don't give a shit about that. Uh, we got a match with Sheamus squashing Swagger. We got a match with Brodus squashing McIntyre. Don't really need to talk about that. You know how their matches go. That the same old match. Bro kick, splash, boom, they're done. Um, San Diego Sin Cara, La Mastre thing. Boom. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Destination X. Let's talk about Destination X. Uh, craziness ensued. Um, so I didn't see it, but I, I heard the results from Rich Hard City. Uh, if you ever watched his videos, um, if you ever watched talk about it, too. Uh, the big news is Austin Aries defeated Bobby Roode. I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, the Ultimate X match, it had Kenny King, which I'm not too sure who he is. Um, I think uh, Mason Andrews, I think, was in it, too. Um, I don't know who was in it. Um, 
I know uh, Sanjay Dutt was in it. Um, pretty, sure, pretty sure Kenny King was in it. And uh, Zima Ion. There we go. There we go. Uh, so they were in. Uh, Zima Ion ends up winning. And people were kind of mixed. I've heard mixed things. I've heard it was pretty good. I heard it say it was shit. So I don't know what to think. So uh, maybe, hopefully down the road, I'll get to see that pay-per-view and uh, get to see what all the hype was about and possibly uh, who's any good or not. Um, as far as you might mean X was a champion, I kind of seen it coming. I kind of thought he was the one you know, last year. But I think the whole thing with him and Jesse Sorensen, they were kind of trying to wait, see how it was going to pan out. I think if Sorensen would have got seriously injured and wouldn't have been able to come back, I think it would have been a completely different story. But now Sorensen is okay. He made an appearance at Destination X saying he's, I think he's back now, or he's, I think he's coming back soon. So I think he's coming back soon. So when he comes back, he said he wants to go after the X-Men title, and he hopes he might win the championship. Well, he got his wish. Yeah, it was just a coincidence, wasn't it, folks? Um, <laughs> it's the way the wrestling world works, of course. I don't think it's a coincidence. Um, does he mind wins? I don't know. I, I, I kind of like the guy. I think he's sloppy at times. But, you know, he, he's, he's growing on me. He does some amazing stuff in the ring. I don't know about Kenny King. I like. I always liked Andre Dutt when he was in the ring. Um, so, it was interesting. Uh, I didn't get to see it. I didn't really get to see any of the, of the other guys. Um, I, I I didn't. I watched the one week. And it was okay. But this week I you know I didn't get to watch it, and I already knew the results of the review, so I just went and deleted it. Uh, figured I didn't really care about the guys because they're probably not gonna be on TV anyway. If they do get signed, then I'll see them again. If not, yeah, it wasn't one to be anyway. Um, so there you go. Uh, Impact this week. Um, I don't know. I didn't really hear too much talked about. It was actually like super good. Um, just you know, basically the build up to Destination X. Um, we saw uh, AJ and Chris Daniels evidently did a pretty good match. Um, what I hear. They actually did a pretty decent match compared to last year's one, and uh, AJ won. Uh, Joe got a victory, I think, because uh, Angle passed out. Got 10 points for Bound, Bound for Glory series. And I kind of figured that they would put like Angle or Joe in Destination X in some sort of match, just because you know they needed some matches to put on the card. And, you know, and they're like wrestlers, wrestling-type guys, so... That would kind of fit in the X Division, you know, thing. Uh, that leads me to believe, um, I was thinking about this the other day, and, you know, now that, you know, Austin Aries has started this whole, well, well you can drop the X Division title. You know, I, I kind of think that this is going to kind of backfire on the X Division and back, backfire on TNA because next year around this time, I just see something fishy happening at either Bobby Roode, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, somebody like that is going to win the X-Division title. And they're going to drop the belt. And it's going to be probably pretty close between each other. And it's going to be kind of ridiculous. Because they're going to get a title shot. So they're going to make a loophole for a heavyweight to become an X-Division star and drop the belt. I'm just seeing that's probably what's going to happen next year. Because now they made this tradition. So now we're going to have people screwing people. I can actually see, like if Jeff Jarrett was still around, I can see him winning the next title uh, next year and like dro dropping it and then getting a shot at the title. I don't, I don't understand. And who the fuck would turn that down? Seriously. Like, oh, no, 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 I'll just keep, I'll hold on to the bell. You know, I can see Abyss, you know, getting the exhibition title again. Why should I ever say that? Never say that. I should never have to say again in Abyss and X Division in the same sentence. Um, but I can see it happening. Just for him getting a, 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 you know, world title shot and a cheap way in. Uh, yeah. Something about Kenny King and ROH and what the hell is this crap about? I don't even understand. I don't care. ROH is a bunch of retards in my opinion. Um, I watch it, and they're, I understand what they're trying to do. I understand they're trying to put a wrestling product out there. But you, when you are extremely boring, 
uh, and you're trying to get an audience from people from TNA and WWE to watch your product, this is what we know as wrestling, okay? So you're going to give us a product that's completely bland and want us to watch. And the matches you put on TV, you only give us like two matches. Like, seriously, they give us two matches. Maybe we get lucky and get a third one. But we get two matches. And, and, and this, they're from a show that's pre-recorded. It's like, yeah, thanks. Why can't you put a show on and call it, you know, just call it like ROH TV or something and like give us, you know, something to watch that we have never seen before. So instead, we get pre-recorded matches from shows put on TV. That makes no sense whatsoever. You think you want to get some incentive to watch. I mean, what's the incentive of an ROH fan to watch your product if they're probably watching it online? I mean, that's just my thing. Like, you should give incentive for a Jorge or, or any other fan <laughs> uh, a chance to watch ROH for something. You know, like, Ooh, Truth Martini is going to get in a match where I don't want to know Truth Martini because I watched it one time. And him is a stable. Uh, it's fighting. Truth Martini is in a match or something. Ooh, we want to see him get his ass kicked. Um, you know, it's all tuned in. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get ROH at all. I don't, I don't understand. I don't, everybody can diss me and everything, but I'm with Slug Daddy. I think they're a bunch of retards. Um, I don't understand it. They... they it's not for me, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's been my uh, crazy wrestling review. I don't know what else to say, really. I've already said everything in the uh, Money in the Bank 2012 prediction video. Uh, go check that out. Like I said, I think Christian's going to win. There you go. Uh, well, on the other one, you really have to ask, seriously. And if anybody else wins in that Money in the Bank match, it's going to be stupid. I would love if Kane would win, but it just doesn't make sense to me. And I don't want Big Show to win. Please don't let Big Show win. The only thing, and I will say this before in this review, is the only reason that I see that they would put the belt on the big show is for something else. If they have something else ready to happen. And in that regard, I would say that why would they do all this time to build up the big show as a heel if they're going to turn around and turn face? Which would be kind of crazy. Um... But I don't really think that they would do that. So I'm going to stick with my thing and say that John Cena is probably going to win it. SummerSlam, Cena versus Punk for the WWE Championship. Or John Cena will beat the transitional champion, Dan O'Brien. Yeah! Dumbass. Anyway, I, I will so laugh my ass off. Last comment of the video. I will so laugh my ass off if John Cena is the first one to lose the Money in the Bank proof case. <laughs> oh, I laughed my ass off. Oh, Anaconda Vice, it's over. <laughs> oh God. I would, I would so, I would, I would pay money to see that for John Cena to lose. After he cashes in his money in the bank. The first person to ever lose. Oh, man, it'd be awesome. It'd be awesome. Well, that's been all. Hope everybody enjoyed watching this crazy edition of Crazy Wrestling Review. Probably the shortest. Um, thank you for watching. Keep watching. Hope you watch the next one. More videos to come today. Keep checking everything out. Goodbye.